your job is never fully guaranteed. You don't succeed, you don't perform, someone else wants your job. Cole Hinton Anthony, born May 15, 2000. When it comes to the process of becoming a star in the NBA, things can change in an instant and completely set a player on a different path where if he continues down, age and other options lock him into that role and a career that once was on its way to great achievements in the league is now void of the opportunity it takes to do so. Opportunity is a special and important word that comes to us all at some point, but it also passes by both whether you're ready or not. Once it leaves, it'll never return in the same form and in sports, nothing is more factual. Cole Anthony's story is a good example of that seeing he was projected as a top 3 NBA draft pick leaving high school, headed to one of the most recognizable basketball programs in the world with 6 months or so before he's all but guaranteed to recognize his dream of being drafted. His time at North Carolina was short, but on paper he was as advertised at quick glance, averaging 18.5 points per game, 0.6 less than the eventual number one overall pick in the same draft, Anthony Edwards, while averaging more rebounds, even though shorter, and more assists. But his team struggled, at one point losing nine in a row, seven straight with Anthony in the lineup. He also dealt with a slightly significant injury along with rumors of concern about him being a poor teammate. Come draft time, all this factored into him sliding not just outside the top 3, but out the top 14 lottery picks altogether, landing at 15 to the Orlando Magic. I still remember those feelings surrounding Cole Anthony in that draft that because of everything mentioned, he was likely to be either champion for coming back to a bad team after a significant injury instead of sitting out and still putting up great individual numbers in scoring, rebounding and assists for a freshman or some of those very things would be what held him back and made him a steal in the draft for a mid to late first round team. The latter happened and Orlando swooped in and took who I thought was the best point guard in the draft. It's been 4 years since then and as of now, that class has produced 4 all-stars, 3 of them being point guards in Halliburton, Ball and Maxi. Maxi, of course, taken 6 spots after Cole Anthony, just signed a 5 year max extension with the team that drafted him, worth over 200 million. He, Anthony Edwards, Halliburton and Lamelo Ball all became stars since then, but the star often forgotten is Cole Anthony. I really believe if not for these reasons, he would certainly be one of those stars. Which leads me to question, where does Cole Anthony go from here? Let's talk about it. Salute to Justin Alley 3399 on YouTube for this request. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth. Let's get it, man. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Cole Anthony, as I'm sure you know, came from basketball pedigree. His father, Greg Anthony, not just a solid player himself, but great commentator that knows the game as well. Cole was born in the final years of his dad's playing career, but soaked up the nuances of the game being raised by him, increasing his IQ and advancing his development. It helped Cole was a gifted athlete as well, one of the coldest two-foot jumping point guards I've seen in a long time. He played three years at Archbishop Malloy High School in New York, becoming the first freshman to start on varsity in school's history. He was everything you could name ending his junior year, transferring to Oak Hill Academy where he averaged a triple-double first in school history, invited to and winning MVP at the Jordan Brand Classic, Nike Hoop Summit and McDonald's All-American Games. This led to a top point guard ranking top three overall and a draft projection as high as number one overall before entering North Carolina. Stunt number one, untimely injury. One of the biggest possible adversaries to an athlete is time. They have a small window in most cases to achieve as much as they can. It's why you see so many players find other ways to get to the league as soon as possible other than going to college. The biggest risk being a player getting injured in those 6 to 8 months and it hurts his placement on the next level. In the NBA, placement is everything. 
It not only differs in salary, but also a team being more or less invested in the player's development. Speaking of team, which one he's placed or drafted to can also be a huge factor. A player injured in college goes into the process at the mercy of how the cards are dealt, and I think Cole Anthony's cards weren't the greatest for this main reason. Entering Carolina, he was all anyone could talk about in college basketball circles. Like mentioned, he was projected to be as high as a top pick. He opened his career with a 34-point, 11-rebound, 5-assist night, where he shot 54% from 3, going 6 for 11, and his team won the game. He followed that with a 20 and 10 game, then 28 points in the team's third of five straight wins. Through December 8, 2019, he was playing as advertised and his team was 6 and 3. Then he was diagnosed with a partially torn meniscus in his right knee that forced him to miss the next nearly two months. When he returned, the team won just three more games, going 14 and 19 on the season, becoming one of the worst Carolina teams in history. Anthony decided to leave school early, which he should have because of him already having a significant surgery to an important body part. It caused him to fall to 15, much lower than the top 1 through 5 he was expected to be before UNC. A healthy season in college and Cole at least goes before Halliburton and Kyra Lewis. Stun number 2, an Orlando problem. We spoke about placement, well, Coles wasn't the greatest being drafted by the Orlando Magic. You would think it should have been, seeing as the team was going through a rebuild and in need of a potential franchise point guard along with everything else. They had the right idea, but then went franchise point guard crazy and overlooked developing what they already had. His rookie season, the team already had what they hoped to be their point guard of the future in Markel Fultz. Fultz wound up playing just 8 games in the season before being shut down due to injury. Cole stepped up and started 34 of his 47 games and played pretty well, averaging 12.9 points per game, nearly 5 rebounds and over 4 assists. To me, Cole Anthony is a player that needs the ball in his hands to be most effective as he's not tall enough, has a long enough wingspan or strong enough to consistently play off the ball. It's also not as natural as point guard for him, which is why I'm confused he's ever labeled a combo guard. His second year, the Magic did him like Cleveland did Colin Sexton and drafted another projected franchise caliber point guard in Jalen Suggs with the fifth overall pick. Even so, Anthony averaged a promising 16.3 points, 5.4 rebounds, and 5.7 assists. In year 3, the team drafted Paolo Bencaro with the first overall pick, and even though not a point guard, Bencaro is a traditional star wing that needs the ball in his hands to create, and with his high draft pick and star potential, they gave the keys to him, making everyone else corner or spot up guys, and as mentioned, Cole struggles when he's not leading the point of attack. He had his least amount of minutes fighting the point guards already in battle for the ball and a ball dominant best overall player on the team. Then what does Orlando do before his fourth year? Draft another point guard high in the draft in Anthony Black the sixth overall pick in 2023, further log jamming Cole in a position he now seems like the odd man out going forward. He had the worst year of his career numbers-wise in 23-24, even though playing 70 and 80 games for the first time, but with zero starts, also a first. Stun number 3, Shooting and Opportunity Which brings me to the final reason I believe Cole Anthony is being held back from being a star in the league as of right now, and that's his ability to be effective off the ball as a shooter. At 6'2", short wingspan, you could also lean toward him being a liability on defense, but offensively is where it hurts him and the Magic the most. Being almost forced to use him as pretty much a wing shooter with Paolo dominating so much of the offense, Cole has never been the knockdown shooter the Magic would need to justify keeping him and Bencaro together. Every season except the outlying year 3, he shot 33% from deep. It's not terrible, but not good enough for a team with aspirations of making it past the first round, 
and maximizing the potential of their star player who could decide to leave the team if they aren't progressing within the next few seasons. An undersized, ball-dominant point guard that can't shoot at least 37% from three is the last point guard a guy like Paolo needs. With Anthony Black and Jalen Suggs being better shooters and top three on the team in three-point shooting at Cole's position, opportunity will be more and more scarce over the next three important years of Cole's career. He came off the bench the entire 23-24 season, with 24-25 being as important a year as any for him not to be typecasted into an off-the-bench spark role. All in all, I believe Cole Anthony is a starter in the NBA. Where does he go from here? Well, in my opinion, he just needs a situation and team that believes in him as a starting point guard, and he can be just as good as any. With all the talent at point guard in the league and coming in every year, along with his inability to show he can adjust at a high level to playing without the ball, it may be difficult to find that in time. This year will determine it all. Hopefully he has a great one, but for these reasons, so far, his growth is being stunted. Salute, much respect, it's your boy JC Stunted Growth, and I'm out.